Oh, the blue batch. Okay, so small bites of the hybrid uh, design here, guys, right? At least when it comes to the Prius C. What I want to focus on today is a, a quick look at some of the details with respect to the inverter converter assembly and its cooling system in particular, right? So we've got context. What is the inverter converter assembly? Well, as you guys can well imagine, um, hybrid uh, vehicles typically have a high voltage battery that is utilized to drive the motor generators in conjunction with the internal combustion engine, sometimes in different modes, sometimes in unison, sometimes separately, but beyond the, the scope of discussion of the video, right? The inverter converter assembly, guys, basically takes uh, through this line here. This is a bi-directional frame wire, as they call it. This is where the battery comes from. The, the, the high voltage supply from the high voltage battery actually comes in. DC, obviously. Um, but it has to be um, inverted <coughs> with respect to driving the motor generators. The motor generators in the gearbox, there's two of them. You can see the, the inputs and the outputs from both of them. And there's only AC on these lines here, guys. Uh, for the simple reason, the motor generators themselves in the gearbox are actually high voltage, AC, synchronous, permanent magnet motor generators. So they can only utilize AC and they can only provide AC for charging purposes. Well, if they're going to provide AC for charging purposes, we're going to have to rectify uh, that AC in order to provide it back to the battery again for charging purposes, whether it be the high voltage battery here or there's actually a separate line at the back here, guys, as we connect her tucked deep under here where you likely can't see it at all. Disney Mar. There is a small, uh, small connector uh, on the back here that actually provides um, 12 volt, let's call it simple 12 volt uh, DC to the auxiliary battery, guys. Yeah, that's right? enough. That's enough. We don't need to dwell on the details. We can get to this in more detail later, should we choose. Um, but I just wanted to show you it kind of interesting, the cooling on this, right? So let's look at the little radiator here. Sorry about how dirty this is, boys, but uh, I'm not one to fuss about aesthetics. I like things functional. I'm not too, too worried about the aesthetics. Um, here's the rad. Of course, the pressure cap, yeah? And we have two lines coming off the rad, as you may expect. But I'm not sure if you can see. You can certainly see this one on the left. See that little line there? I have my finger on I know it's disappearing into darkness there, guys, but take my word for it. It goes down to the bottom of the rad. There's also another line that you're not going to be able to see that's right down the bottom there. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it, but take my word for it. There's actually four lines from the radiator proper. Nothing to do with the condenser coil. I'm strictly talking about the radiator um, that cools both the engine. And there's also a secondary uh, section which is dedicated to the cooling loop for the inverter converter. It also has a duty cycle controlled, so variable speed by altering the duty cycle that is applied to the pump here, an electric pump. And what it does is, depending on how much cooling demand is uh, required for the inverter converter, is through this cooling loop here, here's the uh, reservoir for the system. I believe it uses the same coolant for both the uh, engine and the uh, inverter. Don't quote me on that, guys, but I'm quite certain it is the same coolant. That's just right at the refill line there. Yeah, see that? I don't think there's any leaks, but... Um, it uses this reservoir. Here's the line here. You can follow it. That's the intake line to the pump. And there's an outlet from the pump that goes through the uh, heat exchanger in the bottom section of the radiator. I'll show you a drawing. You can't see nothing here, so I'll show you a drawing on this, guys. And once it dumps the heat energy, it actually comes back up. Here's the end line here. Here's the line that comes back up. Provides the cooling to the uh, high power electrics. Um, there's a heat exchange that goes on so the, the uh, heat energy is drawn from the, uh, from the boards, from the uh, high power switching that goes on inside here. And the um, outlet is right here. And it comes back and returns to the reservoir. So that's how the cooling is actually done. The degree of cooling that's actually provided, again, is done by altering the speed of the water pump, the coolant pump right there, right? Now, now keep in mind, guys, there's also a fan, obviously. This is also duty cycle controlled, speed controlled, as far as the degree of cooling on the entire radiator. 
So in the uh, in the uh, algorithm, perhaps it alters the speed on the uh, radiator as well. Again, depending on the total cooling demand that would be uh, exerting on the system at any given moment, right? So there's the uh, quick look at that system there, guys. Again, we'll just consider it in small bites. Here's a look at the drawing here. And uh, as, I, as I said, here's the reservoir, the uh, supply tone to the pump, and then the lower, um, what is this, maybe quarter of the radiator, completely dedicated and separate from the uh, engine coolant. Why two separate systems? Because the cooling demand on an internal combustion engine and these electronics guys would be quite different with respect to degree, right? And, and what mode they would require the cooling in. These could get quite hot quite quickly and the engine would not even be up to operating temp, for example. So hence the two separate independent loops. Um, there is uh, temperature monitoring, multiple temperature monitoring uh, sensors for this system. And again, um, the power management control module, not to be confused with the engine control module, monitors that and controls the speed of the pump accordingly in order to, uh, in order to provide the necessary degree of cooling. Make sense? I hope so. Uh, here's the just quick look at the schematic. Don't need to dwell on it. I think you get the point. Uh, just a relay when the ignition is essentially <laughs> turned on, even though there is no key. I think you get the point when the system's powered up. Um, the power management control module itself is powered up. It will monitor, um, as I said, it will monitor the sensors. In fact, I think one shown. Uh, maybe not. Maybe that's just a drain cock in the drawing. There's definitely internal uh, sensors inside the inverter converter itself, and uh, depending on the uh, again the the temperatures and the conditions that prevail, um, the water pump itself is going to be pulse width modulated in order to provide the degree of cooling that is necessary to keep this thing from having a meltdown. So that's it. <coughs> um, just an overview of the system here, guys. Of course, the two systems operating in unison, uh, in some cases, high torque demands at relatively low speed, high speed, uh, high vehicle speed, typically the engine itself is operating as standalone, low, low speeds would be kind of electric mode of operation, at least with respect to the hybrid uh, Prius C model. Right, so this was initially a mystery to me. Can you see this little panel here, guys? This little tab that comes up, covers this bolt. There's a gap under here. Why? What's up, boys? Cheers.